What's up, mutants? Welcome back to day two of the great Strebo-Rama vlog experiment, where I intend to upload at least one vlog every other day. And if I can keep up with that schedule, I'm going to upload one every day. We're just going to inundate you people with more vlogs and information than you would ever possibly need. But in case you get stricken, bitten rather, by that MVP bug one Saturday night and you feel like watching, you know, three hours of Brento or myself rambling about um, esoteric subjects, then you you will be able to have that wish fulfilled. Today is, is going to be a fun, quick little vlog because uh, we're celebrating the one year anniversary of MVP Mutant Radio. Um, I'm also going to briefly discuss that I was invited on the Vault of Mysterious Information with hosts Corey G and T-Shirt Joe to discuss horror superheroes this coming week, which is a very cool subject. Actually, T-Shirt Joe is not going to be on the show, so I'm going to guest host, and that's what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> of course, that's coming to you from our good friends at the Vault of Mysterious Information. Now, a funny thing you'll notice here at MVP, we say our good friends or my good buddy a lot a lot of times. We, we say that about everybody because essentially at MVP, it's a click, a big party where everyone is invited. All you have to do is show up, be talented, and not be a douchebag, and you're welcomed in. Sometimes even if you're not talented, we'll let you hang around so you can pick up a few pointers along the way, and we'll give you a chance to prove yourself. But just show up and don't be a douchebag. What do you know? Easiest way to join. <clears throat> That's why we have so many people that are our good friends, when it'd be so much easier to just be enemies with everybody. But that's not what MVP is about. That's not what MVP Mutant Radio is about. Which, by the way, happy anniversary. One year to MVP Mutant Radio. We managed to put out, I think, 48 episodes. Yeah, 48 episodes. Which is not bad for one year where we dedicated ourselves to putting out one a month. The uh, history of the show really began long before last year because MVP radio shows had kind of existed in some form or another for a while. Probably beginning back before MVP even existed <laughs> uh, when... My two co-founders, Brento and Geo, teamed up to do um, Brent's radio show, which I think was World Assault Radio at the time. War. And uh, it was cool. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. We'll have to, we'll have to ask Brent and Geo to uh, give us a timeline for that, because I think it was early 2000s, maybe late 98 or 99 or something. So it, it was a while back. Um, so the idea of, of creating this audio show and putting it out as some kind of entertainment and also um, ed educational device, using it as an educational device, has existed long before the idea of MVP Mutant Radio or the name MVP Mutant Radio. I'm just glad that we were able to get it all under one banner now. <clears throat> Though in the last year it did kind of grow exponentially and that it split into two banners when Brento decided to start up his own show which is Brento's Budget Filmmaking Podcast, by the way, which he has recently revealed that he only wants to do 50 episodes, and he's halfway through. So uh, if you want to catch up on the last 25 before, before they're done, then make sure you jump in now with some feedback. But it saddens me that we didn't at least get to 50, because that was the plan. And there, there are always so many lost episodes on MVP Mutant Radio, and that's the funny thing. Um, where you, you try to line up shows for guests, like um, I, I kept trying to line things up with, with Jay at the Back Alley Film Series um, back before the Mad Monster Party, and uh, it just didn't work out. We, we had to change the date a couple times, and, and our schedules is conflicted. So, you know, I wound up losing the time. I would have put out another episode, and while I was moving him around, I had, you know, unfortunately, I had... Utisha the movie goddess and the lovely actress Vanelle that plays her uh, on the shelf because I was wanting to do an episode with her as well, but I was going to do Jay's first. So backed both of us up. Boom, two two episodes knocked out. Was flash forward to last Friday, 
Um, I'm trying to, to get another show out. You know, Todd, the crazy effects guy, agrees to come back on the show with me. Uh, Todd is, has been one of the most commented upon guests. Both uh, Todd, Phil K, and Corey G are the three most commented upon MVP guests. So uh, we try to get those guys on whenever we can. Had Todd lined up to do it, Brento says, hey, I want to do it. I'm going to go see Oblivion. My plan was to see Oblivion. Actually, I still have Oblivion mon movie money. Check this out. It's the Strebo, Strebo Rama way, my children. It's let the universe <laughs> guide you. Okay. So I thought, is there a chance I'm going to see Oblivion? Yes. Is there a chance that I will really enjoy this Flash Gordon <laughs> Blu-ray uh, that I'm going to pay, for, pay $10 for? Yes, I will enjoy it. Is that like going to see Oblivion and getting a free Blu-ray with it? Yes, it is. So, you know, it all worked in concordance. <laughs> Except my work schedule, which has been totally slammed since the day after the Bad Monster Party, uh, kind of prevented me from getting out to see any movies last weekend. I worked Friday night. I had to work Sunday night. The only day I had off was, was Saturday. I was butt dog tired, but um, there was UFC on Fox. That's free UFC. I thought, well, what do I do? Do I go out and spend 20 bucks driving around to go, go see these movies, or do I stay home and watch a free UFC? And the free UFC won out, my friends, and that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, this vlog is going a little bit long. Um, I was going to talk to you more about horror superheroes um, just as a lead-in to my Vault of Mysterious Information tie-in show. Um, but I don't know. Maybe we'll just save it for then. Horror superheroes, in case you haven't. You don't know what that concept is. The Crow. <clears throat> Where it kind of... It, it takes horror tropes... Um, and myths and reworks them for superheroes where essentially you have a character that would just be a zombie though he's an intelligent zombie of sorts um, <clears throat> you have that kind of character fighting you know criminals and bad guys and it essentially makes him a hero though that's a very different tragic and romantic tale I'm a super crow nerd for all of you out there by the way this was a gift from my good buddy Phil K <clears throat> based on the original James O'Barr design of The Crow from the graphic novel, um, which I have. I did beat James O'Barr and get to discuss that with him. And, uh, you know, sadly, Brandon Lee was killed here in Wilmington in North Carolina. It's our great legacy, North Carolinians, uh, in, in that tragic accident. And that changed gun handling rules on sets forever, on film sets forever. Uh, yeah, still very, very tragic. But... Uh, Horror superheroes goes back even further, like The Shadow, which some of these are going to be like, what, really? You have to remember these are, they're kind of, it's a subgenre that combines two very discordant genres into one. It's kind of the world where fantasy and horror, horror meet on this weird, dark line. But the reason I say The Shadow is horror is because, uh, well, horrific. If you ever listen to the old radio shows, it, you know, the shadow was always mysterious, and you would hear him in the background. <laughs> the shadow knows. And it was treated as a, a gothic radio program. Um, and the, the villains, which were usually gangsters of some type or petty criminals, um, were always trying to get away from the shadow. And... In a lot of ways, they served as the proxy for the viewers because then we would follow them and they would encounter the shadow. And you're like, where is he? I can't see anything. Where is that coming from? You know, and they, they would be terrified by his presence or his his attack or his trickery or whatever. So that's what I mean. So also Batman, you know, he, he donned. Ding dong. There, there I am getting a text message. He donned his bat costume to strike heart into the into to strike heart strike fear into the hearts of criminals everywhere. It's hard when you're multitasking and doing all this stuff to not let your mouth just run away and say something goofy. I'm showing you these Kelly Jones covers from the early '90s because they bring out the more horrific aspects of uh, what Batman was dealing with. And here you can see his character. Look at it. it's like a supernatural monster right there, Batman. 
strike fear into the hearts of criminals everywhere. Criminals are a cowardly lot. It's my Batman voice. Anyway, so I've got a bunch of these things. Now, the Vault of Mysterious Information guys actually discussed Swamp Thing already. Faust, Moon Knight, which was Marvel's attempt to just blatantly rip off Batman, and but make it more horrific, which I really love. Um, they focus just more on the straight up horror aspects, like the, he crossed over with Werewolf by Night, like that's where he actually appeared. Alright, anyway, this video is running long, so I'm going to wind it down. We could go on a little bit more, but I'm not going to, you know, all the way up to today, if you look at <clears throat> Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight, if you edited that out, there's like a slasher movie there, you know, um, I'm still waiting for the fan edit of that to pop up. The Dark Knight slasher cut. It just tells the story of the Joker slasher killer. So, there you go. Anyway, uh, thank you all for checking out MVP Mutant Radio. We're going to try to keep keep the shows going. I'm try to keep the guests lined up. I'm going to I'm going to get out sometime this week. See Oblivion, see Lords of Salem. We're going definitely going to discuss them on the show. Um, got, uh, you know, I'm going to cross over with the Vault of Mysterious Information guys. Check them out at vaultofmysteriousinformation.blogspot.com. Of course, I'm over at mutantville.com. You can follow me on the Twitter machine if you so desire at MVPLAYERS, MV Players. All right, this is Strebo. I'll talk to you next time. Peace.